welcome back to Shameless Peg Leg. It is Sunday night. It's time for a head shave. But first off, I wanted to show something. The Ender's razor. This is for Sig Solo. He was asking me questions about it. He says his piece fits in it perfectly, and it's tighter than hell once it's locked in, and he has a hard time getting it out. So I'm just gonna put this in here. See, it didn't click that time. And the blade's cockeyed in there. Hang on. Let me see if I can get this thing in there right. Okay, it, it clicked. It clicked into place. I don't know if you could hear it, but I could hear it. See, it's it's seated in. You can see the edge of the blade. Now watch. He says his is tighter than hell to get out. And the blade stayed in. So I don't know if this one I got is defective. My razor is defective. I don't know which one it is. Because it does not lock in that tight. And half over half the time when I take it out, the blades the blade stays stuck in the razor. So I don't know if I need to trim the blade a little bit if it's a little too long. But I'm actually liking the fact that it's wedged in there so that it doesn't move around. All right, it just it just clicked into place again. Mm, I, look at my thumb. That's how hard I was pressing. Okay. Locked in. Locked in. Blade. And the blade looks cockeyed, even. So that means it came out it came out of the holder and it just pops right out so I was gonna use this and try and do a head shave with it today but I'm not if I could get it to lock in place like Sig said his does you know where it's oh a real son of a gun to get out but this one does not want to play that game this one is blade got stuck and I had to whack it on the counter to get the blade out. See, it's in there straight this time. Mm. Oh, wait. Maybe we will use it for a head shave. I can't get it out this time. I don't know what I did different. I can't. It just doesn't pop out. I did something right this time. So... All right, we'll save that for next time because I already took the picture for this one. I'm going to use the auto comp double edge. I don't know if this is a relation to the original comp brothers of the 1880s and 1870s and 1890s and early 1900s that made the original Star Razors or if they just stole the name. Either way, it's an auto comp double edge and this water is cold. Ooh, I put hot water in there before I started and it's Oh, well, if you notice, I don't have my fan on tonight, so. And yes, we're using a 
and I didn't use that much. I used maybe, maybe an almond sized amount of soap and I got all this and I'm using the Bay Rum. I'm still not 100% sold on Bay Rum. Still not. I'm not. I don't know if I like it or if I dislike it. I'm, I'm right there at that point with the Bay Rum. I'm not sure. It's not that I hate it. But honestly, I'll tell you right now, I do not think I would buy a full tub of Bay Rum. It's just not for me. I don't have anything against cloves or cinnamon or nutmeg or bay or anything. I just, the combination itself is just not blowing my skirt up. Comp Brothers, or I should say Auto Comp. And the blade in it is a second use Gillette King C, which we do know is a rebranded or remarked Gillette plaque. Interesting on that Ender's Razor. The 50th time I played with it, I finally got the blade to lock in like um, Sig says his does, where you, it doesn't come out easy. It's a son of a gun to get out. Which I can live with that. I have pliers. I can get that sucker out of there. I'll just, actually, I'll just grip it with a towel on my fingers and pluck it out. Well, I'm home alone again. Mom went back in the hospital this, this, early this afternoon. She should have never have been sent home from rehab. The insurance company wouldn't pay to, for her to stay in rehab anymore, so they sent her home when she wasn't completely healed yet. And her legs had been getting progressively worse since she's been home. Where they were almost cleared up when she was in rehab. If she could have stayed another two weeks, she would have been good. Her legs probably would have been completely healed, and she would have been fine to go home. But the insurance company said, nope, you're going home. Freaking insurance companies, they scream and, and cry when it's time for you to pay them. But the only time they scream and cry louder is when they have to pay out. So now, they have to pay again, but she's got to suffer. She's got to be in pain again because of those idiots. That's doing pretty good. I, I did like that razor the first time I used it on my face. That's a, that's a good razor. I think it was between 25 and 30 bucks because it's on the end of my rack here. And I think that's what the 25 to $30 razors were. So I got them in sections according to how much they cost. The, the under 10s are over there. The, the 10 to 15s are there. 15 to 20s are there, 20 25s, and 25 to 30s are over here. And there's a few of them up there too, because I ran out of room on this shelf. I gotta do something. Because I got all these razors here now. So I've gotta do something about putting them up. Getting them put up, because I got them in their boxes all on the car. I'm thinking about above the door and on the, each one of those short walls at the same height where that, that trim piece is above the door frame, putting a shelf laying right on top of that and then a shelf on each, each side of the little wall there, each little wall, putting a shelf. That's when I said the other day, I got to put more shelves in here and I'm thinking that's where they're going to go. It's the one over the door and then two smaller ones and you what I'm basically going to put up there is like my razors that are in boxes or cases a lot of them will go up there and this is not a mild razor this is more on the medium side at least the way it's feeling on my head with this blade So I'm thinking about putting those up there and then 
going up my top shelf here above this one <coughs> excuse me is where all my bowls and um, my antique um, shave scuttles are the, from the Victorian era all those are up on that top shelf I was thinking about putting the old shave scuttles on those shelves up there too for decoration but I'm not sure what's gonna happen right now I might not be in this bathroom much longer guys because if mom has to and um, we've been talking about it her going into assisted living facility if she has to go to one of those because I have a very hard time taking care of her because if her legs can't completely heal and they're always going to be like this I won't be able to do it I took something out the back of my head I knew I had a bump back there and I got it I got I just saw blood but that's okay if you have a bump on your head, use a DE and remove it. Yeah, I won't be able to take care of her that well. Because I got I've got my own issues getting around, of course, with no legs. So and she was crying to me how she wanted to just lose her legs below the knees because that's where she's having problems. I'm like, no, you do not want to do that. You are not strong enough at 79 to put up with that. You'll be in a wheelchair the rest of your life, and I cannot lift you from your bed to the wheelchair and from your wheelchair to the toilet. She's a big girl. It's like, that ain't happening. She said, I'll just get artificial legs. She's like, no, you won't. You can barely walk on the legs you got. Even when they were fine, you had a hard time walking. Okay, December 18th, 1898, going back again, a ways, going against the grain on the head now, 1898, what was going on in 1898, I'll tell you what was going on, Count Charles Francois Gaston Louis Prosper de Chazeloup Labat. Yeah, that's his full freaking name. He set a land speed record using a Jean Todd electric car. And he set a flying one kilometer, 0.62 miles run in 57 seconds using an electric car. An average speed of 63.13 kilometers or 39.23 miles an hour. A whole 39 miles an hour, guys. With an electric car before 1900, though. That's what I talked about this in a previous thing. Where electric cars are not uncommon and they're not new. They've been around. The first cars were electric. Well, the first cars were steam, actually. And then electric before gasoline. And the electric ones came out in the 1870s. And the steam ones were in the 1840s, the first ones. I don't know if you saw the blood on that when I pulled it off my back of my head there. One kilometer at 39 miles an hour. Little over half a mile in 57 seconds. But you got to remember the, the electric motors back then 
for one, the, the batteries didn't have the juice of modern day lithium type batteries. They were all acid batteries, lead acid batteries. They didn't have the power and the electric motors they had back then were freaking huge and did not have the power that the modern ones have. Because modern electric cars can do zero to 60 in like three seconds. Or, I mean, they're about, seriously, they're freaking quick because you've got usually one on each wheel and with electric motors, you don't have to wait for like a gas motor for the RPMs to build. Depending on how much juice you give it depends on how fast it turns. So if you lay it to lay the pedal to the floor, you're just dumping, giving it full juice. So it just I mean, instantly all power gone, and you're and you're like a rocket, you take off. Oh, cutting my head up good. Look at that. Nice. I haven't haven't bled in a few days on on the head. A few tries. All right. One month later, in January 17th, 1899, he increased his record to 41.41 miles an hour. He upped it by two miles an hour. And then March 4th of 1899, <clears throat> he increased it to 57.9 miles per hour, but then lost it to an another guy who was going after the same record, Camille Janetzi, who was a, a Belgian race car driver, and he took the record on April 29th, a little over a month after the count set his record, and he did a first run of 62.14 miles an hour. And um, he held that record for three years. And the Count, Count Charles Francois Gaston Louis Passepur de Chazeloup Labat, he also managed to win the Marcel La Turbie long distance race in 1897 with a steam powered car built by Trepado and C. Steam powered car. Steam powered. Won the long distance race. And it was the only major city to city uh, car race car race that was ever won by a steam car. And the count died at the age of 37 after a two year long in illness in La Canate near Cannes. He died in a small town at the age of 37, which is sad, of course. Got just a little bit here. Almost nothing here. I'm going to just do my trouble spots and see what happens. No, I would not buy a tub of this. I don't care who made it. You guys can say, oh, chisel face bay rum isn't good. Try this brand. Try that. No, I don't care. Bay rum for me is going to be a no. I don't care. Because they're all going to smell similar to that. And that's, that's going to be a no on a full tub. And no, I am not pressing down like I would with a cart to get my trouble areas. Because my trouble areas would become skinless areas. Looks like I made a partially skinless area as it is. That's okay. I don't mind a few nicks on the head. Shave will last longer. <laughs> but yeah, back in the day, this is all before 1900, guys. Steam powered and electric powered cars. Going 60 to 70 miles an hour. But that was all before gasoline engines became popular. 
and like I did the one the one history thing on Ben's he was the first one to really produce a gasoline powered car for that and his wife his wife Bertha helped a lot with the design of that especially the brakes which I thought was a hilarious story going to a shoe smith in one of her stops to get fuel to have him put shoe leather shoe soles on the bottom of the, of the brake blocks so they get more grip <laughs> smart lady though that's that's good that that's a good head shaver right there for, for under 30 bucks that's that's a great head shaver Tomorrow, I wanted to, oh, Broken Gentleman John, Ellen Block. Yeah, there's a few spots that are giving me a rush up to four or five because I did nick myself a couple times. But most of it's a, a nothing until I hit those spots and then it's, then it's Rocket Man. Oh, damn. They are some, they're rough. Whoa. Oof. Okay. Yeah, I, I, my daughter's coming in from out of town with my granddaughters on Thursday, so I, I want to do some things around here. The front room, that's my youngest son's bedroom, is a boy's bedroom. So I've got to get in there, and because he, when he moved out, he really didn't clean it as well as it should have been. But and he comes back and stays, and every time he comes back and stays, it's a little worse than what he was before he got here. So I want to get in there and clean that. But yes, tomorrow I really wanted to just spend all day, because what I did with that Star Razor, that 1887, is I took the blade and I used the barber hone on it, which you use on a straight razor, that when your edge starts to lose a little bit, instead of just dropping it, you give it about 10 swipes on that barber hone to refresh the edge a little bit. It's not a complete hone. And I was hoping that that blade still had some edge to it. That if I did that on the barber hone and then dropped it really, really well, because I dropped it like over 200 times, um, that I would get my edge. And I did not. It, it was fine on my arm. It cut all the soft hairs on my arm. As soon as I laid it down, it just they just popped off my arm. But on my face, when it hit these coarser hairs, it, it just slid right over the top of them. Um, I... I'm not blaming the soap being too slick because we know Williams is slick, but it's not that slick. And, um, which hazel. I'm just going to say that I did not have the blade sharp enough. And I really wanted to just take it right, right to the stones and start with, start with an, um, with a 400 grit stone and work my way up to 12,000. And then really give it a good home bring bring the edge back to it but I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do it because I got I just got so much I want to do the sample of Bay Rum I just I just really I just have so much I want to do before my daughter gets here no that's that's like I said, it's not a horrible scent. It's not a. It's just not a scent for me. It's just that ain't that ain't going to cut it. Johnson Johnson baby lotion to keep the dome as soft as my brain. Yeah, Bay Rum is not going to cut it for me. So I'll use this one up on head shaves, and we'll call it even, and we won't buy it anymore. All right, guys, I appreciate you being here. I gotta wax a mustache and beard tonight. Well, actually, I gotta oil it. Best beard oil, beard oil ever. It's been used for centuries in the Middle East for your hair. And the main reason they used to do it, use it back then was it kept lice away. Lice did not like olive oil because they can't breathe in it. Anyways, <laughs> guys, don't forget the affiliate link, please. You use that affiliate link. There's several out there. Some of you probably have your own. But if you use mine, when it hits $25, I get kicked back. 
on it when I if that amount hits $25 I buy a gift card to $25 to the razor company give it back to you guys in the giveaway all right we're climbing again a little bit on the channel for some subscribers when I hit 400 I'll do another giveaway for 400 subscribers so if you're not subscribed please do so so we can hit that landmark so I can give away some more of my money I don't mind it's a good thing to do I appreciate you guys it's my way to show I appreciate you for being here and taking your time to be here I appreciate it and don't forget to subscribe to the four individuals I'll link in the description box will help boost their numbers naturally so that they don't have to join the the buyers club and with that I will say I'm not gonna say Merry Christmas yet because I got shaves coming up before Christmas and on Christmas Day so with that I'll say Done with the babbling fat guy in the camera. You're in the chair next. Had a good head shave. Happy shaves out there, guys.